Hey guys, it's Greg here from Kinobody.com, and uh, a question that I get asked is, you know, Greg, uh, you know, should you go low carb on rest days, or should you, you know, cut out carbs completely on rest days? That's a question I get a lot because, um, you know, I really recommend lifting just three days a week as a natural. I mean, that's really where you're gonna get your best strength gains um, because you're gonna get great neural recovery. So when you come in, you can lift heavy, and as a natural, to get build a lot of muscle, you got to get really strong. Um, you're simply not going to build a lot of muscle as, as a natural that's not on steroids, doing lots of volume, lots of reps. That's not how muscles grow as a natural because you only really get it doing one thing at a time. And recovering from torturous amounts of volume and uh, work capacity, workload, really supersedes actually increasing the contractual filaments of the muscle. So that's why I recommend low volume lifting. Um, but back to the question, you know, let's say you're lifting three days a week and, uh, and then you're resting four days a week. Should you drop your carbs down to, to burn fat? Um, no, you shouldn't. Really, what you have to remember, okay, this is regardless of, of whether you're training a ton or you're not training at all. Um, fat loss comes down to the calorie deficit. That is the bottom line. That is the cardinal rule. So, on a rest day, you know, maybe you don't burn quite as many calories. You know, maybe you're a 180 pound guy on a rest day, you burn 2,500 calories just from, you know, just low activity. Um, well, you could eat 2,000 calories, you could be in a nice deficit, but you could still fit in quite a bit of carbs, a moderate amount of carbs. So there's really no need to ever go completely low in carbs or completely, uh, or just take out carbs altogether. As long as you're in a deficit, you can eat as many carbs as you want provided that you get in sufficient protein, sufficient dietary fat. Um, but that's all it comes down to. And so I actually would rather someone fit in a good moderate amount of carbs regardless of how much they're training. Um, you know, a lot of people will throw this out that like, you know what, oh, if you're not active, if you're not doing high intensity training, well then you don't need carbs. You don't have a physiological demand for carbohydrates. So therefore you should just go paleo or you should just eat meats and vegetables. Um, and I say that's crazy. That's wrong. That is completely wrong. Um, what they sh what you should do if you're not active is find the most enjoyable way to eat at a calorie deficit. That's it. That is it. Whether you have a physiological demand for carbohydrates does not dictate whether you should eat them or not. Um, well, it does dictate whether you should eat them if you don't want. Like if you if you're training a lot, then of course you're gonna want to eat carbohydrates. But if you're not training a lot, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have carbohydrates. All it means is find the most enjoyable way to find that deficit and stick to that. For some people, it might be going low in carbohydrates. Um, but for myself and for a lot of staggering amount of the population, um, the majority of us, going really low in carbohydrates is not the optimal strategy. Um, going really high in carbohydrates is not the optimal strategy. It's the middle ground. Whether you're lifting weights two hours a day or whether you're just completely inactive, um, that's what you have to understand. For me to really enjoy a diet, and enjoy eating a deficit. I like to eat quite a bit of potatoes. I have tons of potatoes every night, um, and I can still hit a deficit. It's not a problem. So that's what I have to say: is forget about the physiological demand of carbohydrates. If you enjoy eating them and you can make it work into a deficit, then do that. Now, this brings me to a point. I have uh, I put together literally the most badass resource on getting ripped that's free. Uh, it's called my B Trip Guide to Cutting. It's like almost 40 pages telling you how to set up your diet, how to eat at a deficit, how to track your macros, how to you know fit meals into your macros. It's the If you want to get yourself ripped, this is what you need. Um, it's free. Hit the link right here. Very cool. Um, but just to reiterate, you know, carbs really, your carb intake is not what determines fat storage or a fat loss. What determines that is the calorie deficit that you're in. Carbs do... Um, trigger the release of insulin, but that doesn't matter. Um, as far as maintaining muscle or even building muscle, insulin is a good thing. It's, you know, the storage hormone, so it helps you store calories into your muscle tissue or retain um, calories in your muscle tissue. So if you're trying to maintain muscle on a cut, well, actually getting in moderate amounts of carbs will help you avoid being in an excessively catabolic state. Moreover, very, very low-carb diets really boost your body's cortisol levels, which is inherently catabolic. 
um, you know, that, that puts you into more of a breakdown state. So the best way to go about it, whether you're training or not training, is to have a moderate amount of carbs, assuming you find that calorie deficit. So I've gone through periods where, for whatever reason, maybe if it was a few weeks, I wasn't lifting weights. And every day I would eat carbs, I'd just do a lot of fasting and make sure I'm in a deficit. And that was far more enjoyable than trying to just, you know, deprive myself of carbohydrates, deprive myself of the serotonin in the brain, mess up my sex drive, because carbs, you have to remember, have a profound effect on testosterone, sex drive, um, and serotonin, and sleep, and all of these important things. So anyways, guys, you know, if you want to learn how to cut yourself, get this report, best thing you'll ever get. Um, and, uh, and that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Time for me to crush some potatoes. Yeah!